Today we'll be discussing the 2015 year-end closed procedures in Microsoft Dynamics GP 2015. A little bit about me. My name is Abby Barton and I'm a Business Advantage Support Senior Associate at RAND Group. I have three plus years experience with Microsoft Dynamics GP. This includes versions 8.0 all the way through 2015 R2. I've also been in the software support industry for four plus years. A little bit about our Business Advantage team. We offer technical support, accounting support, and business management support. The first topic on today's list will be inventory control. The purpose of closing your inventory module prepares your inventory records for the new fiscal year. It also transfers all summarized current year quantity to transaction history for the items for which you have been keeping summarized sales history. The quantity sold for each item is set to zero, and it also updates the amount in each item's beginning quantity field to the quantity on hand field at each site. Here's a summary of the steps. We will post all transactions for the year related to the inventory module. Then we will reconcile inventory quantities. You will complete a physical inventory account and then post any of those adjustments. Fourth, print all important inventory reports, such as the historical stock status or historical inventory trial balance. Next, make a backup. Go ahead and close the year. Close all fiscal periods related to the inventory series. And lastly, you'll make a final backup. Let's review those steps in Microsoft Dynamics GP 2015. Let's begin the inventory year-end closing procedures. For our first step, we're going to post all transactions for the year. So I'm going to go to the Master Posting, which is Tools, Routines, Master Posting, and I'm going to post anything related to sales transactions, purchasing transactions, and inventory transactions. So let me grab my batches. And there's one here. And I have one here. And then lastly, post my last one. Okay, so those are the batches that I have for this year, and I'm going to go ahead and click post. For sake of time, I'm going to cancel out of the reports because I do not need those. But if you do need the reports, print and save to your destination. So now that I've completed posting all my transactions for the year, I can exit out of this window and I'm going to reconcile my inventory quantities. In order to do so, go to Microsoft Dynamics GP, Tools, Utilities, Inventory, Reconcile. And I'm actually going to unmark include item history since I've already ran this previously. But if you have not run it before, please mark, check mark that box. So let's click Process. And we'll click print the screen. All right, and what the reconcile does is it makes sure that your inventory control data has not become damaged during the year. So it'll make any necessary changes needed. Let's fast forward to the inventory reconcile being completed. This report shows any changes made to an inventory item, such as has been marked as sold, purchase receipts changed, back order items changed, quantity on hand or allocated quantities have been moved. So if you need, go ahead and keep this report if you need to for your records, or you can exit out of the window. For our third step, you are going to complete a physical inventory count and then post any adjustments. So if you use the stop count calendar, we can go there and I'll show you an example. You go to transactions, inventory, stop count schedule. And I have a demo schedule here, so I'm going to select that one. And in order to use the stop count schedule, you'll want to insert your item numbers here. You can also do a mass add and select multiple item numbers to insert. But for now, we'll just keep these two. And then we're going to have to set a default site ID. It will be warehouse. And I'm going to go ahead and start my count. And I'll click Save. And I'll print my exception list to the screen. 
And then I'm also going to print on hand quantities. This will print a form. Click OK. And OK. OK, so no exceptions were found. You can exit out of this. And this actually prints a form that you can use for your physical count. Um, so it shows that my on-hand quantity for this item is 1, and my other item has 103. So you can mark your counted time and how many were counted. I'm going to exit out of this for now. After you complete the stock count schedule start count, you'll go to Transactions, Inventory, Stock Count Entry. Within this window, I can pick up my demo here, click select, and then my item numbers are shown again. So my counted quantity for this item was one, but let's say I counted two. And for my next item, my item quantity was actually 103, so I had exactly the same amount. So you'll notice that if the quantity was less or more, you'll have a variance quantity. If it was exact, it'll show zero. In order for this to post the variances to inventory, you can either click process and it'll create a batch in the inventory module, or you can auto post that. So for example, I'm going to auto post so I don't have to post a second batch. And I'll click process. And we can review the inventory journal. I don't need to review these other reports. And I'll exit out of the screen to print the report. Okay, so it looks like it posted to my inventory the adjustment or the variance of one for the unit cost of $3.29. So if you don't use stock counts, you can enter the adjustments in the transaction adjustment entry. Inventory transaction entry. Item transaction entry. And you can enter adjustments here, just like you normally would. So now that we've completed the physical inventory account and I've posted any adjustments, I'm going to go ahead and print all important reports. So the important reports are, or the recommended reports are, the stock status, purchase receipts, turnover, transaction history, serial number, or lot number report. Those reports can be found under reports, inventory, activity is one. You can find your purchase receipts, um, your stock status, also a stock count list, historical stock status, and a historical inventory trial balance. Since I've already printed the reports for this company, I'm not going to print them now. Your next step will be, able, will be to make a backup. To create the backup, log into SQL Server Management Studio, expand your databases, right-click on your company, Tasks, Backup. I'm going to remove that one, and I'm going to name this one uh, Year End 2015 IV Backup dot back. Click OK, and OK, and OK. OK, so now that I've successfully completed my backup, I'm going to log back into GP, and I'm going to start uh, the close of the year. In order to do so, you go to Microsoft Dynamics GP, Tools, Routines, Inventory, Year and Close. Okay, so let's review um, the following options in this window. You'll see that there is quite a few. So first one is removed and discontinued items. If you have set items in your item cards to discontinued, this would actually remove those items from your inventory. You can click to select the sold lot attributes checkbox. If you use lot attributes, for example, you can remove the value red for the lot attribute color if you have sold all lot numbered items that have that signed value. The third option is sold receipts, and this actually removes all sold receipts whose quantity received amounts and quantity sold amounts are equal will be removed. And lastly, it's the update item standard cost. For this option, um, it would only apply to those who use the valuation method of FIFO periodic and LIFO periodic. What will happen is, is that it will update the item standard cost to what, it, to what its current cost is currently. 
So for this company, I actually don't need to use any of those check boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now it'll complete without a report printing, so don't worry. The, the last, or the fourth step will be to close the fiscal periods for the inventory series. So we'll go to Microsoft Dynamics GP, Tools, Setup, Company, Fiscal Periods. And I'm going to mark all of my inventory periods closed. And OK. OK, so we've closed the fiscal periods. And our next and final step will be to make a final backup. So go back into SQL, click on our company, Tasks, Backup, and then I'm going to remove the previous one, and we're going to add year end 2015 IV backup after dot back, and click OK, and OK. All right, so now that this has completed, we've completed the inventory year-end procedures. But let's review what has actually happened during the close. What was updated is actually all the sold quantities will have been cleared and are now zero. So if you go to Inquiry, Inventory, Item, and we look at a few items here, you'll notice that the sold is now zero. And we can search through a few, but all of them will be zero. Next, if you go to Cards, Inventory, History, and we select an item, all of your current year amounts will have been cleared to zero as well. So for this item, my last year will show 78, my sales cost would have been 4,329, and my sales amount would have been 4,676. But for my current year, it is zero. Now that we've completed the year-end close for this module, if you do need further support, here at RAND Group we do offer 24-7 support, especially during year-end close time. Just a little bit more about our company. We originated in 1996. We have 100 plus local professionals to serve our clients. Our offices are located in Houston and Dallas, Texas, and we recently just became the top 1% of Microsoft partners worldwide. If you do need further assistance, you can email us at info at randgroup.com to schedule a private consultation or call at 1-866-714-8615 and you'll be connected to our support team right away. Thank you for watching.